Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, the first lecture on finite element method. I am Samayat from IIT Kanpur, India. I am PhD uh, candidate and uh, originally I came from uh, Ethiopia uh, from Defense University College of Engineering. I was uh, a lecturer there uh, of most engineering course like uh, finite element, uh, <coughs> machine element, uh, most design courses actually, including uh, mechanical vibration. So I'm going to uh, present finite element method for, uh, the, for online uh, learners. So this is lecture one. So, uh, I will start from uh, the basic uh, concept of finite element and taking a simple example for the first lecture. And I will reinforce this lecture by uh, using some uh, software packages for the uh, analysis. Uh, that will be in the next uh, series. So uh, let me start from the introductory part of finite element. So finite element is a numerical uh, procedure for solving mathematical models uh, numerically. So FM is uh, use some discretization method that we break down a given uh, large physical volume or physical <coughs> component into any number of discrete uh, parts and then using that the smallest element from the discrete system, uh, we can make analysis on that. So uh, it is discretization uh, that we divide a given element into, uh, a given structure into sub-elements, and on that nodes and elements will be created. So. FM is an approximation method actually. It is the solution which we are obtaining from finite element is not an exact solution, but it is an approximate solution to, uh, uh, for a simplification of the problem domain. So approximations are introduced over each element to represent the behavior of unknown variables. So that are unknown variables may be of the displacement or, or the stress or the strain. Engineers uh, model physical phenomena or physical structure by using some analytical description of physical phenomena and processes are called mathematical models. Uh, in the mathematical model, we develop we use some assumptions on the process and uh, which are characterized by some differential equations which are partial differential equations or integral equations. Numerical methods typically used to solve engineering uh, mathematical models which is referred to as numerical simulation. So different types, types of elements are used. Uh, some of them are uh, bilinear elements, some of them are quadratic elements, triangular, and different elements are used. So actually the finite element approximation is uh, improved by using more elements. Actually, whenever we increase the size of discretization, means the number of discrete element, the solution which we obtain from finite element is considered more accurate to the uh, 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 real values. So uh, that discretization is uh, one of the uh, common method to get uh, accurate solutions. So accuracy of the finite element approximation improved by using more elements to approximate the engineering system or element that involve more nodes to define the unknown functions or variables over the element. Uh, this is some of uh, finite element mesh in some structure. Okay. 
common application of finite element uh, analysis. <laughs> In most real world, we use FEM for different application, especially for mechanical, for aerospace, for civil engineering, for automotive engineering. In structural stress strain analysis, under uh, subject and under static loading or dynamic loading, or for linear or nonlinear analysis, again for fluid flow analysis, for heat transfer, for electromagnetic fields, solid mechanics, soil mechanics, acoustics, biomechanics. In these areas, we use uh, FEM uh, analysis. <coughs> Sorry. So these are uh, some of the areas where FEM is mostly uh, applicable in current era, especially in the area of aircraft. <coughs> In the case of Boeing 777, uh, Airbus A380, uh, or in the area of sonic jets. And uh, the most commonly known thing is uh, the application of FPM is uh, in the uh, structural analysis. As example, the bridge which is uh, located in San Francisco Oakland by bridge, which is uh, uh, before 1989, that was collapsed uh, because of the design problem by, uh, actually it is not because of design problem, but because of the earthquake. And then finally uh, collapsed. So this is the uh, structure after uh, earthquake. So, which is uh, uh, made with finite element or finite element analysis uh, made on that. Engine thermal analysis for uh, uh, automotive case. In this case, the questions are, what is the temperature distribution in the engine block? That is the question uh, to be arised. And so how we can solve it, that Poisson partial differential equation will uh, help us to solve the equation. So here we use a partial differential equation of the mathematical form to uh, analyze the temperature distribution of the uh, engine block. Okay. This is electromagnetic analysis uh, of package. So that we use Maxwell partial differential equations in this case. Okay, so, and here, my uh, micro machine device performance analysis. So equations which we use is, is uh, elastomechanics, uh, electrostatics, Stokes flow equations are uh, very important equations to solve such uh, problems. <clears throat> Radiotherapy of lung cancer. So as you see, that lung is modeled with FEM tools and uh, discretized into the required mesh. So uh, this is uh, in uh, radiotherapy. So FEM uh, process contains actually three main uh, parts. That is uh, pre-processing part, solid part, and post-processing part, which is uh, simply summarized with this uh, graph. So in this graph, <coughs> the physical problem will be identified first. Then that physical problem will be go for mathematical model. So when we go to mathematical model, uh, governing differential equations are re required, and some assumptions of important geometry, assumptions of kinematics, assumptions of material law, loading and boundary conditions are included. Then finite element solution stage will come, that uh, the choice of proper finite element choice. Finite element that is uh, discretization of the system then mesh density 
at the size of mesh per unit uh, uh, length of area, the solution parameters, uh, and requirement of loading and boundary conditions. And then assumptions of the accuracy of the finite element solutions of the uh, model, uh, mathematical model. Then to interpretation of the result, that is post-processing uh, zone. So the middle one is uh, solution zone. The first one, region one is uh, pre-processing. So in the post-processing, uh, we will see the result, the final result after uh, solution. So that uh, interpretation of the result. Uh, what is the stress? What is the strain? Where is the stress located? So once the uh, uh, it is okay, then it will go for design improvement and structural optimization. If it is uh, there is uh, disagreement on the result, we refine the analysis and go back to the uh, uh, first. Uh, post-processing field that we have to improve the mathematical model. We have to see all the aspects. Again here, if uh, in the assumptions of the accuracy of finite element, well, actually this design process by itself is most iterative process, which can recycle until we get a uh, refined solution or the solution to the required level. We have to iterate the process uh, from last to the beginning or from the beginning to the last. So that iterative process, this is uh, FM, F finite element analysis process are most iterative process. Uh, this is some physical problem, which is a bracket, which is uh, subjected to uh, load W. Okay, so, uh, so how we can model this thing? That is the uh, question. Uh, so in this case, we have to uh, model this physical problem into some uh, solvable form. As we see, the shape difference is there. <coughs> there is some holes, some uh, uh, fixing positions. So, well, this thing uh, all should be modeled with the help of finite element method. So what is the bending moment? That is the question. What is the deflection at the pin? So this is the pin. What is the deflection with respect to uh, applied load here? So parameters are given. For example, the width, length, uh, the poison ratio, the youngest nucleus of material, and so on. All uh, design parameters are given. So uh, we can uh, make this with FEM. So we <coughs> model it with a B model, just taking the uniform cross section and applying the load at this tip. So actually, this is a simple model. So with that, we can calculate, calculate moment at uh, section AA is uh, that W times L. So uh, we can get uh, 2750. And deflection is uh, just uh, using this formula, we can calculate the deflection. This is actually analytical calculation, not FEM calculation. How we can uh, use the FEM, that is the question. And also, we can calculate it using the plane stress assumptions that uh, taking kilogram equations, uh, <coughs> again, uh, taking the strain displacement relation, we can also solve uh, this problem. So, Finite element modeling solutions to mathematical model. Uh, that physical problem is determined, then mathematical model, then the numerical model will be, and there is a verification and validation. So these are uh, required. So uh, as uh, summary of the previous, 
modeling uh, physical problem. That physical problem is the structure itself under analysis. Then we'll convert the structure into mathematical model. And then the mathematical model uh, will be supported with some numerical equations. Then uh, numerical model will come. Then does the, uh, this process is okay or not? If it is okay, uh, we are happy with the solution. Maybe some refinement also required. And if it is no, we have to refine the analysis as a whole, improve mathematical model, again also design improvement structural uh, optimization, then change a uh, physical problem and uh, it will recycle. That is the iteration of the process. So the former uh, uh, problem can be solved also using the finite element model. So this is the uh, physical problem. We discretize the given problem into any number of uh, elements. So this is the meshed part, that finite element part. Okay. So we'll go to the problem again, but so the three process are uh, pre-processing. Uh, analysis or solution and post-processing are the finite element analysis uh, steps. So what is pre-processing? So in pre-processing, we define the geometric domain of the problem. We define the element types to be used, the material uh, properties of the element, the geometric properties of the element that like Length, area, and others. Uh, in the case of material properties like poison ratio, young smoothness of material, and others. And we have to define the element con uh, connectivities that the mesh uh, connectivity. Uh, because two elements are connect each other at the node, so uh, where is the connectivity? That the list, okay? Then define the physical constraints that are boundaries and define the loadings. Which type of loading? Is it distributed load? Is it uh, point load? Or is it uh, actually applied load? Or what type of load? When we come to solution that uh, compute the unknown variables, these unknown variables are uh, either uh, stress or maybe uh, the displacement or what. Then compute values. Uh, compute values are then used by uh, back substitution to, to the compute additional uh, derived variables such as reaction forces, element stress, and heat flow. The post-processing is, uh, that is uh, the final result extraction step. So uh, which result we need? We have to know uh, the last output which we need from our analysis so that uh, from the post-processing we can get or extract our result. So when I come back to the former question, so the already the domain is discretized into any number of elements. So let's take uh, one element from here. So considering the uh, uh, bilinear uh, element having four nodes. So okay, this is quadratic uh, quadrilateral element or bilinear element. So having four nodes and the completely this element having four nodes. So that is uh, the concept of node and element. And let's go to the fundamental concept of uh, FEM. So a uh, continuous field of certain uh, domain having infinite degree of freedom is approximated to a set of piecewise continuous model with a number of finite regions. That regions are called elements. As I showed you here, we have n number of finite regions. Region one, region two, region three, region four, 
so we can give a numbering for each region the regions are bounded by the uh, uh, nodes so finite regions are called elements okay <coughs> The number of unknown uh, defined as nodes are determined using a given relation. This is a simple relation of force, um, stiffness, and displacement relation. So F is equals to, uh, we can represent most of uh, the model with matrix notation. So matrix, uh, this course needs the knowledge of matrix. How we can operate matrix, how we can invert the matrix, inverse matrix. Okay, so uh, matrix knowledge is very important in this course. So, if we take a simple uh, uh, bar element, which is subjected to axial load with domain uh, of uh, this type, and Actually, we'll come uh, later uh, after this introductory letter, the uh, main point. So what is psi, what is x? So uh, this line implies the line uh, that continues field over the entire domain. So what is the uh, uh, continuous field here? Another, we have uh, another line here. So here we discretized the given domain into n number of uh, shape functions. Actually, this pi one, pi two, pi three are shape functions. Actually, so blue line finite number of linear approximations. So in our linear approximation, we use some shape functions psi. So uh, this is the method of approximation. So. General steps in uh, finite element analysis are the first one is discretizing the domain into n number of elements. The next, uh, that maybe it can be 1D, 2D, or 3D approximation, or sometimes it can be axisymmetric uh, uh, analysis. So the second is selecting the displacement function. That is uh, one of the, uh, the function using different shape functions. What are shape functions? We'll uh, discuss it later. Not it is not today's lecture. So define a function with each element using the node values. Define stress or uh, um, displacement and stress-strain relationship that using Hooke's law, uh, the stress-strain uh, displace uh, or force displacement relation should be defined. Again, drive the element stiffness matrix and uh, equations. So uh, once we discretize a given domain, we have to define that what is the stiffness matrix of each of the domain uh, that constitutes the whole system. So, uh, so derive the equation within each element. Then assemble the element equations. Once we discover uh, uh, properly uh, give this element stiffness matrix, then we have to assemble them in order to get the full model. So uh, assemble element to gain uh, global matrix or total equations and introduce boundary conditions on it. So <coughs> add element equations by method of superposition to obtain global equations. Solve for the unknown degree of freedom, uh, this uh, primary unknowns. Solve for element strains and the stress, that is, uh, and finally interpret the result, that is the post-processing step. So, some applications as uh, stress analysis, that we use it, this analysis for stress analysis, frame analysis, on stress concentrations, especially in the area where sharp corners, 
the battling analysis like uh, the beam under compressive loading, uh, vibration analysis for strains and different uh, uh, vibration uh, analysis, uh, heat transfer and fluid flow analysis. So, uh, sorry for the sound actually, uh, uh, anyways, so what is the advantage of FM? The first one is two model irregular shaped bodies, which are very difficult with analytical uh, solution method. So to model such irregular shaped uh, bodies, we use finite element. And also to compute general load conditions, uh, model bodies composed of different materials, like a composite material, this having uh, two or more uh, different materials within. So in this case, uh, analysis is very complex by uh, analytical method. And solve a limited number and the kind of boundary conditions. And able to use different element size and place where loads are stress are concentrated. And handle nonlinear behavior using linear approximation. So, uh, and also reduce system cost. Sorry. So, So uh, some of the finite element modeling packages which we uh, commercially use are uh, large commercial programs which are designed to solve many types of problem can be uh, upgraded fairly easily. Initial cost is size actually less efficient. So special purpose programs uh, that are relatively short, uh, low development cost additions can be made efficient in solving their specific type of problem and cannot uh, solve different type of problem. This is special purpose of uh, uh, FEM programs. Uh, the basic FEM programs uh, which we are uh, mostly using in finite element analysis are like Algor, ANSYS, Abacus, LS Dyna, Cosmos, uh, Cosmos, uh, Stradine, uh, Image 3D, okay, uh, Nastran, Nisa also, SAP, okay, GT Straddle, Solid Model, okay, Fusion 360R, also the most important uh, finite element modeling packages. And there are also some uh, uh, add-ons, means uh, post-processing software also are there. Uh, for example, we can call Digmat. Okay, so others are also. A simple example in FA model, um, this is one D bar model. So how we can model a single uh, bar? which is subjected with axial load P and having lengths L, cross-sectional area A and material property mu and uh, the poison ratio. So how we can model this? That is uh, uh, the basic question. So the first thing is that uh, stiffness matrix. So as I said, that matrix is uh, one of an important uh, part of this lesson. So everyone who is attending this course must have some, some knowledge on matrix operation. Anyway, so stiffness matrix, when we come to stiffness matrix, uh, for 1D, the stiffness matrix is derived from stress-strain relation in Hooke's law the, and the definition of stress and the strain. Okay, let, let me use pointer. Okay. Uh, where is pointer? Mm. Let it be fine. Okay, so how we can make 
as you see here, um, it is continuous bar. So the first thing in finite element modeling is discretizing the given domain into n number of elements. So we must discretize uh, this element into some number of elements, like doing like this. Okay. So, and each discrete element must have two nodes. These are nodes. Okay. So let's take one of the element. Let's take this element. Okay, this element. Then consider this is the element having uh, length uh, L. We can call that as uh, some delta L. And um, starting node is D1x and ending node is D2x. Uh, and the applied load at one node is F2 and at first node is F1. So for this, from direct stress strain analysis, we have uh, that from Hooke's law, stress is directly proportional to strain, and the proportionality constant is called the Young's modulus of material. So that from that, we can get sigma x is equals to Young's modulus of material times the strain along x. And from the force uh, area relation, that stress is force over area, as we know, we have this formula. And then the strain is uh, change in axial displacement, change in displacement over the original displacement for a small element dx and a small elongation du, uh, the strain is equal to du over dx. So <clears throat> this, the mathematics part, especially linear algebra, plays a major role in this course so that we use these partial differential equations. So change in uh, deflection that uh, d2 of x minus d1 of x over L uh, will give us the strain. So substituting uh, uh, each other, what you can get is f1x is equals to Ea over L. Uh, this Ea over L is the stiffness. This is a stiffness, uh, E over L, we can call it as K. Okay, K, D2, X minus D1, uh, D1 X, which gives us uh, DU. Okay, so F1 X is equal to this. So uh, F2 X also evaluated in the same manner k times this. Finally, combining into matrix form, k is equal to Ea over L, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. This is the stiffness matrix. So the next is displacement function. For a given set of nodes, there exists a function that approximates the displacement at any point. Uh, position along the bar. So this function is called the displacement functions and it is derived from the Pascal triangle. So this is the Pascal triangle. So how we can, this is for uh, 2D uh, approximation. So X, Y is there. Okay. Uh, y, this is of X, X, X square, X cube, X and continue. And this Y, Y square, Y cube, Y the four of four. So uh, this is this is for constant. Uh, this combination is for linear, and here there is a combination of the x and the y. Okay, x y, x square y, x y square. These are the combinations. Okay, quadratic, cubic, and quadratic equations. So we can uh, take a displacement function from here. For example. Uh, for 1D approximation, considering uh, we can take u of x is equal to a1, a1 
plus a2x plus a3x square plus that means uh, we are uh, all here that our uh, bar is actually loaded number so that we combine this uh, portion okay if the load is in the way we combine but if for combined loading case we can take uh, these regions so this is for uh, the approximate uh, displacement function for uh, our 1d bar case so let's consider uh, that uh, the bar uh, the, the uh, bar is having only two elements. Two elements means our discretization is two elements, having three nodes. The displacement function becomes a1 plus a2x plus a3x squared. So a1, a2, and a3 are, uh, they are uh, constants to be determined from some uh, uh, conditions. So how we can put this in matrix notation? So this is the uh, linear equation. No, no, quadratic equation. For two elements, we use quadratic equation. So how we can represent this quadratic equation in the matrix form, that which is equal to u of x is equal to 1, x, x square. So this 1, x and x square is our limit is from here to here only. So we took this, okay. So one x x square, and this is a one a two and a three. So this is announced to be uh, fine. So these are coefficients. So how we can find these coefficients? That will be uh, the part of our uh, discussion. So by knowing the distance to the nodes and displacement at these nodes. The equation become u1, u2, u3, which is equal to uh, uh, 1, 0, 0 for x1 is equal to 0, x2 and x3 are the distance to the nodes, and uh, u1, u2, and u3 are the dis uh, displacements. So <coughs> 1, 0, 0, 1, x2, x2 squared. 1, x3, x3. So this uh, uh, 2 and the 3 implies the nodes. For example, let me draw. Uh, actually, it is already drawn there. I'll show you. Uh, for example, this is node. This is node. This is node. So this is x1. This is x2. This is x3. Okay. So that's why it is uh, x2, x3, and uh, so this is the model. So we discretize the given domain into two. So uh, we separated the part into two parts. So Determine the displacement. What is the question here for this problem? Determine displacement of material. It's A and the B. Material A and the material B. Because this is, uh, assume that this is made up of two material. Having the material property of E and the 2E. Area is AA, the same. Length is the same. But the youngest modulus of material of this is different from this. So, which is subject to this actual load uh, P. So how we can solve this uh, type of problem? So the first thing is discretize the domain with uh, approximate elements. Element A, element B. Element A means for the first part. Element B is for the second part. So the given domain is discretized into two parts. So this is uh, element one element A, this is element B. So element A and element B, connecting node 1, that is uh, uh, generally nodes are 1 to 3, 
and uh, diagonal displacement and the, the, the uh, deformation or displacement u1, u2, u3 at each node. So these are the variables to be uh, find. We are going to find these unknowns. We don't know that u1 is what? u2, u3. And uh, f1, that is uh, force uh, at the fixed end, uh, F3 at the force at the uh, load applied position. And then this, this is a discretization. Then we further uh, took each element. We took this element, that uh, element A, and this is element B. So the Node members are one and two for each. One, two, two, three. So U1, U2, U2, U3. So this is uh, the method of discretizing the given uh, elements and uh, assigning nodes. Now, select a displacement function. Uh, for example, we selected the quadratic displacement function. This one. So, a1 plus a2x plus a3x square uh, that will be taken. Then, define stress displacement and stress strain relationship. So from uh, Hooke's law, we have this formula. And from the uh, strain definition, we have this formula. Then finally, drive the element stiffness matrix and the element equations. So the element stiffness matrix, uh, K should be derived. We have to drive the K uh, form or the K values. So that stiffness matrix uh, for each element, for example, for element one, uh, E1, A1 over L1. Then for element two, E2, uh, E2, A2, uh, L2. So in our case, L and uh, A are the same, only E is different. So E is two times. So this is for the first element, that is A element. Mm, we have no two here, here but two two. This two two means it is two times of, E is two times, that's why. So uh, this is uh, 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 element uh, stiffness uh, equations. Especially this one is element stiffness. This one is element stiffness for A and for B. And the next is constructing the stiffness that superimposing the two equations, we can find the global equations. This is local equations, locally for each element. We considered these equations for A, case A, and this equation for case B. So we'll, we are going to superimpose these two equations together. Then finally, we get this equation, that is uh, global uh, equation. And unknown uh, variables here are uh, actually known variables. F3 is equal to P, that is already applied load. Uh, F2 is equal to F21 plus F22, which is equal to zero, not given. Uh, boundary conditions. At x is equal to zero, u1 is equal to zero. That means the structure here is subjected to is uh, fixed here. This is fixed. So, and this boundary is known as um, this. This means x is equal to zero. Means uh, deformation u is equal to zero. So that boundary is already known. As this, x is equal to uh, L plus L, it can be two times L, that uh, F3 is equal to P. So we have 
two types of boundary conditions. One is the displacement boundary conditions, and another is the uh, force boundary conditions. So they are called as pneuma conditions and uh, uh, mm, uh, actually, three boundaries which we use, uh, the richlet boundary condition, Newman boundary conditions, and the mixed boundary conditions. So, uh, displacement boundary and force boundaries are specified. Okay, so applying the boundaries and uh, known parameters. Okay, so instead of F3, we can substitute uh, P. Instead of uh, this thing, we can substitute zero. So then, what you can get, actually, F1 is uh, at the point where reaction will take place, so that F1 is cannot be zero. So F10 P, E over L, and the K matrix, and then displacement at A is zero, so that uh, this portion is zero. So, Finally, we can get uh, F1 is equals to this, and uh, U2 is obtained as U3, that is deformation at node 3, deformation at or uh, elongation at node 2, node 3, and these are the solution. Solve for the element strains and the stress. That is also the next step. So, uh, from stress strain relation, as well as from the uh, Hooke's law relation, we can get strain at to uh, stress strain, uh, stress, uh, no, youngest modulus of material of A times strain of A, then finally we can get P over A. So these are the stress strain calculation. Finally, interpret the result. That is post-processing, that comparison or uh, making comparison of results with analytically obtain the result of the solution. So uh, just to summarize today's uh, lecture, uh, I'll give, actually this is a summary, what we have discussed. So the basic concepts of finite element analysis are uh, definition of geometric form of the elements, the presentation of behavior, generally uh, polynomial interpretation, Construction of the algebraic equations that correspond to the governing equations of the problem. And FEM, uh, actually, this the eight steps which are basic for finite element uh, already, what I have discussed, uh, are uh, discretizing the given domain, uh, formulation uh, of the properties of each element, assembling element to obtain the finite element, applying the non loads and boundary conditions, solve uh, simultaneous linear algebraic equations of the uh, different parameters, and then uh, stress analysis calculations, uh, heat transfer analysis calculations, output interpretation, uh, these are what we have to do. So uh, thank you very much. This is all.